Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet and all things related to the carnivore diet and a few other odds and ends. As you can see, I'm leaving the parking lot here. Going back over to the bird trail today. See how far we can get. I have a general plan in mind but we'll see what happens, because plans are always subject to change when you're out on the trail. Today we're going to revisit a topic that I covered back early in the September challenge. And I think my views on some things have changed a bit since then. So today we're going to talk about, do I know too much to ever go back? First, I just want to say, once again, Joe and Rachel, if you're watching this, thanks again for what you did for the Wounded Warrior Project. It was such a successful stream. And, you know, to be honest, I had a lot of fun doing that interview. But uh, the work is so important, and I'm glad someone's doing it. And between now and next year, let's get together a couple of times and see if we can't figure out a way for me to make even more of a contribution next year, because that was just fantastic. And before I get into today's topic, you know, I got to... I always get a little introspective around Veterans Day because, you know, everybody's always coming up to me thanking me for my service and all that stuff. And this year was especially tough because I got to thinking, you know, I when I first enlisted, that was going to be my career. I was going to do that for 20, maybe even 25 years, then retire. But, uh, you know, I got discharged because I had gout. But if I had known then what I know now, perhaps I could have stayed in the service. Because if I had known then what I know now, I would never have had that day when I woke up and went to the doctor on base because it felt like I'd broken my foot. But there's, you know, no use dwelling any longer on that. One of the things I've always said that I think too many people overlook in their lives is that, you know, let's say I had knew then what I knew now and had stayed in the army. I wouldn't be here talking to you guys now. And think about some of the things while well, I could have done without the last 40 years of pain and suffering. I can't imagine that my life would have been that much better than it is right now. Because if I had always been healthy and always been able to get out here and do the things I'm doing now, yes, I probably would have hiked the Appalachian Trail decades ago. But... I appreciate this trail so much more now. You know, the fact that I'm not just sitting in my trailer. I'm not just sitting in my trailer, circling the drain, waiting for the inevitable. 
I'm out here having a great time every day, whether it's walking laps around the church or coming out here to the trail. I can't imagine things would have been any better. But back to what I was saying, one of the things that I've always said, the sum of our experiences make us who we are today. And while we may have some regrets in life, if we'd eliminate even one of those experiences that we had 10, 20, 30 years ago, we would not be the same person that we are today. So, something that I just, it just popped into my head while I was leaving some comments after my interview on the uh, Two Crazy Ketos live stream. And I don't remember what I was responding to, but I decided I'd write it down because it's worth sharing. Don't let yesterday ruin your today. And we've talked about things like that quite a bit. You don't necessarily... I thought I heard someone coming up behind me, but I don't see him yet. You know, we've talked extensively about falling off the wagon, making mistakes in life, whether it be on your carnivore journey or some other area. A good football analogy is sometimes a team will get so depressed or down on themselves because they lost the game. They let the same team beat them two weeks in a row because they're too busy thinking about what went wrong instead of what they can do to make things right. But we're going to get into the topic now. First, I'm going to get a little hiking in. And uh, I shall see you up the trail a little bit. Through the magic of editing, it'll be like I was never gone. Hi guys. This is just a quick stop and turn around and show you where I'm at. Because those of you that have been following my channel every day, this is the spot that I turned around in that first trail hike. And while I'm a little out of breath right now because I've been hiking pretty quick today, I barely feel like I've gotten started. So I'm gonna hike a little more and then come back and talk to you again. Stick around, this should be a good day. Hi guys, I'm back again. Magic of editing, it's like I wasn't even gone. One thing I wanted to talk about before I get into today's topic, as you can see, I got a water bottle carrier I'd like it to sit up a little higher, but because I have a cheap, cheaper backpack, it's only got one of these connection hooks on the front. So I may have to look into how to add one of those connection hooks for myself. But this has been a huge bonus. because so I don't have to take the backpack off. I don't have to struggle. Boom, I just got my water out. But uh, today's topic, do I know too much to go back? You know, I have always thought that after I get to goal, I would work on on a more keto lifestyle. And, you know, the more I dig, the more I look at things, I'm not so sure I'm going to do that now. Um, 
I, of course, will add in some other carnivore foods rather than just beef. But I have to do a lot more research because there are so many oxalates in plants. You know, is almond flour one of those things that we can use on keto? Or is it going to just restart the whole process of building up oxalates in our system? Those green veg. I don't think green beans are high in oxalate, but I could be wrong. But, you know, any of the high oxalate vegetables, I think, are just off the table for me. I don't think I can go back to eating vegetables at all. I think over the course of six months and a week that I've just, I've learned too much. I know how damaging to our system vegetables, plants can be. And what about other forms of carbs? You know, there's a lot of, a lot of deep diving that I've done into the Randall cycle watching Bart K, Professor Bart K. And after being on This Way of Life, and again, by the time I get to the point where I'm going to actually think about doing some of this stuff, you know, that's still, I'm guessing, at least six months to a year away because I know my weight loss is going to slow down even more. It's going to take a really long time to get that last 45 to 50 pounds off. But one of the things we have to be aware of is that there are some carbs in keto stuff. Not many, but some. How many carbs does it take to activate the Randall cycle? How many carbs does it take to affect what we're trying to do? I mean, my triglycerides are way down. They're in normal range now after being over 500 just a few short months ago. My HDL, which had been, no matter what I did, I couldn't get it above 37, and now I've got it up into the normal range. How many carbs is it going to take to affect that? Can I make a recipe with just two or three carbs in it? Or are those two or three carbs going to throw things completely out of whack? I just don't know. I have a lot more research to do. And it's something we each have to think about. And while I stand by everything I've said so far about the November challenge, about not gaining any weight, but not being disappointed if we don't lose any weight, I still believe you need to have a plan in place. Not only for what one thing you're going to cheat with but have a plan in place to get back on track the next day and one of the things I why I still want to do that on Thanksgiving is that if that one thing that I've been looking forward to for an entire year ends up making me feel awful for a day or two or even three I suspect that will motivate me even more to just plan on sticking to plan through Christmas. And of course, January is carnivore month, so we'll. I think every day should be carnivore month, but we'll see how it goes moving forward from here. I'm just not sure about pretty much anything. Hang on a second, guys. I will get back to you in just a second. I had to shut you off for just a minute there. There was somebody else coming off the trail. It's been really busy out here today. I, As you can see, I'm wearing my jacket because it's just barely 50 degrees. It was like 41 when I got up this morning. Um, so I hadn't... Yes, it's a beautiful day out, but it's only 50 degrees. I didn't really expect to see very many people out here. And I have seen more people on the trail today than any other time I've been out here. So, I don't know what to think. 
I guess you just never know when the trail is going to be busy and when it's not. But this bench I'm sitting on, I had I, during the music section, you'll see a little video of the hike of like the last oh 50 or 60 steps approaching I, it crosses a little stream up to where this bench is this is the same bench i sat on in the second lake trail video and so we'll see how it goes from here so let me know what you think down in the comments about whether or not the cheat on thanksgiving by just a little bit is going to affect you and if it does affect you is that going to change your plans for christmas at all i just you know i guess all we can do at this point especially for me as a first year carnivore going through this all i can do is try things and see what works and what doesn't um i can't give you definitive answers on this is what's going to happen because i don't know what's going to happen but uh you know remember what i said earlier in the video everything we do today each day affects who we are further on down the line so maybe the experimentation with thanksgiving and christmas this year will turn me a little bit more hardcore next year i don't know i hope not um i'm never going to get dogmatic because i stand by what I said in that very first video and will continue to say in every video, every video when I remember to put it in, if you find something that's working for you, there is no reason to change. Never. There's never a reason to change if, change if what you're doing is working. Okay, guys, I'm going to pause the video here. I'll see you further on down the trail. It'll be like I was never gone. Hi guys, here I am back again. I just stopped for another quick check-in right here. I'm at the top of the lake trail. This is where I turned around the second time I did this trail. I am going to keep going, but I just wanted to show you this spot with the lake behind me. This is a really beautiful spot. But let's keep going and see what's on ahead. Well, here I am, folks. I'm at the end of the lake trail, and let me just do a turnaround before I sit down on the bench. Look at that. Yeah. Lake trail goes back that way. The Galax trail goes that way. Um, I'm going to cross that bridge behind me there, because it looks like that connector trail is going to lead me over to the trail that I did the other day where I came down off the overlook and down next to the river over there. So that's my ultimate plan for today. It looks like it's, and again, I've made mistakes out here before, but it looks like I can either go back the way I came or continue on and do the loop the way I've planned to do it and it's going to end up at about the five miles on trail mark. I of course will let you know where all that goes and this is not the end of the video I just had to stop and take this lake in for a little bit. This is amazing. And this is the type of stuff that motivates me to keep me going. Besides you guys, you guys are great. I love you guys. Each and every one of you that's watching this video, every time you leave a comment, it motivates me to get out here and do more. And then just realizing how far it is back into this bench I'm sitting on, no matter which way you come into it, just six months ago, there is no way I could have gotten to this bench. None whatsoever. And it's really amazing to think about. Just sitting out here in the peace of nature. Looking at everything. How amazing is this, folks? 
I don't know what I'm trying to say right here, so kind of at a loss to words in this beauty of nature, this wonderful planet that God has given us. So I'm going to have to pause you again here for just a second. I'll see you further on up the trail, but it'll be like I was never gone. Hello again, everybody. I am now sitting on that bench. If you remember, it's about my third hiking video out here where I walked the old wagon path to the overlook and then went down that great big hill and then turned around and came back up. I'm sitting on that bench at the top of that big uphill. I didn't have to stop anywhere along the way on that uphill. And I checked, I was only up to 120, my heart rate was only up to 120. And it come back down. It's now under 90 again after just sitting here for, I literally sat down, took a drink of water and turned the camera on. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm at about the, I forgot to look at the step count. Yeah, I'm at about the four mile mark here right up until I did that last uphill I felt like I could just keep going for days but now I'm ready to stick with my plan and head back towards the car from here but uh oh okay but this has been an excellent excellent day out hiking and because I have a couple little short video clips that I took with the camera facing the other way, and I don't even know how many pictures I took. I took a ton of pictures today. I'm going to need some place to insert those. So while I do about the mile and a quarter back to the car, I may not film at all. But for now, let's cue the music.
Okay, cut the music. Thank you. I'm here at the last bench that I know about. It's a fairly new bench. I'm now just a little more than a quarter mile from the truck. So I thought I'd stop and talk to you one last time here. Remember all the good things the carnivore diet has done for you. We're not just talking about the scale here. Think of every little victory you've had on the carnivore diet. And once you reach your goals, are you really, are you really ready to go back to eating the way you did before? I know I'm not. So I hope you guys liked this video. I, uh, I don't know exactly how it's all going to come together, but videos like this is sort of what I had in mind when I started undertaking this trail hiking thing. We'll see how it all comes together. Let me know what you think down in the comments. You love it, you hate it, it's okay. Whatever, you're not going to hurt my feelings either way you, you comment. But let me know what you think about it. Remember there's a video pop-up over here that'll show you the entire September walking challenge from the beginning. Another video pop-up over here that you have never seen before. Don't forget to get out there. Be 1% better today, folks. I will talk to you tomorrow. Hi, guys. I made it back to the truck. I'm ready to drive back over to the campsite. What a great day this was. I hope you guys had as much fun watching this as I did making it. I'll see you tomorrow.